we will go to the next topic uh, in biology vaccination uh, or immunization okay you can say vaccination or immunization both are same you have this in your uh, 12th standard cbc book on page 152 in the context of uh, human health and diseases in that chapter you have this when you say vaccination vaccination or immunizations they work by stimulating the immune system so human body has a natural immune system this natural immune system is being stimulated by means of a process called vaccination and it is a natural disease fighting system in the body okay natural disease fighting system in the body okay so when you say vaccine what is a vaccine okay what is a vaccine how do we got the name vaccine the credit goes to the scientist by name edward jenner okay edward jenner is a microbiologist and uh, in his period there was outbreak of a disease called smallpox and he found that a very small group of uh, population what do you call as a milk vendors okay that is uh, people who work in uh, milking the cow and uh, making a sale of that we call them as a milk vendors so these milk vendors were totally free from the infection caused smallpox okay that triggered his uh, mind and he started to prepare the first vaccine there 1798 okay first man to identify a vaccine in 1798 in the world how he did he came across uh, a virus in the cough in one of the cow is a cough in that we have the virus called vaccinia virus okay and what he did with the help of uh, his uh, intelligence he injected that into a healthy man okay to fight against what variola virus in man that causes smallpox to a great surprise he found that that healthy man developed a lot of antibodies to kill what to kill vaccinia because he has given only vaccinia virus to a healthy man so that healthy man developed antibodies and uh, against the vaccinia virus okay in his period the knowledge on antibody immunity they are all very very scarce okay what he did he prepared a vaccine with the help of vaccinia virus taken from the cow cough which is suffering from the cow pox infection so this is the vaccinia virus okay and uh, he injected that in healthy man and uh, later on he found that uh, this uh, preparation what he, had, he has done is able to fight against variola virus in a man okay this is a variola virus okay and uh, hence he gave the name to the treatment as a vaccination and the sample as a vaccine after the name of the virus called vaccinia that causes cow pox infection to the cough and the cow okay what is the principle behind it nothing but based on the property of memory okay memory of what of the immune system where is system system present in man okay man has an immune system and that immune system has a, a very unique quality called memory that is what to remember what to remember any unknown protein that enters a body this is the basic property for the principle behind vaccination okay now we know okay after the uh, latest statements and discovery now we have a great knowledge on biotechnology okay so now we talk about uh, this uh, you take any pathogen for example a virus that causes influenza to man now you take that pathogen and you isolate the protein okay you isolate the protein from that pathogen what do you call that protein antigenic protein so what do you call the pathogen here you call it as the antigen according to immunology study we say as antigen okay so so we come across antigen antibody reaction this is a very basic concept of immune system okay so this antigenic protein of the pathogen which may be example influenza virus or you take the pathogen and inactivate the protein that the protein or inactivate that pathogen make it uh, inactive 
Okay. Example, cholera vaccine. Or you kill that pathogen. Example, polio vaccine. Or you can do what? You could take the pathogen and attenuate it. Attenuate it, making it very weak. This is called as the attenuator. Example, MMR vaccine. Now, you take such an antigenic protein in any one of these four types and introduce into the human body. What body will develop? Anti the body will develop antibodies, which will be very specific because we have a very good memory of the immune system. These antibodies will utilize the pathogen during actual infection. So when such a healthy man happens to have the entry of that particular pathogen, then he will develop the utilization mechanism of these antibodies. Clear? This is the principle and method behind it. Now, what are the advantages of any vaccine? Vaccines also generate memory cells. What are memory cells? B cell and T cells. What's the advantage? There are two major advantages. One is they recognize the pathogen quickly on subsequent exposure to the same disease. Number one. Number two, that to overwhelm the pathogen with the massive production of antibody. For example, if only 10 molecules of the pathogen enters the body, the body can produce more than a thousand or more than 5,000 of antibodies. So that antibodies are more in number, antigens are less, pathogens will be less in number, so that all the pathogens are killed, okay, within a very short duration. So that the, such a man who had the vaccine will be free from infection. Next, we will go to types of immunization. Here we will see only one top, only one type, what you call passive immunization. The rest of them we will see in some other context. Let us take example tetanus or snake bite. Okay, so tetanus is caused by Clostridium tetani, a bacterium. What about the snake bite? Because of the venom produced by the snake. See the diagram here. So, if you inject directly the preformed antibodies or inject the antitoxin, how we prefer antitoxin? A preparation containing antibodies to the toxin. We call this as the passive immunization method. Now, what is the advantage today with the advancement in biotechnology? In advantage, large scale production can be made of any vaccine. What is that? With the help of what? Recombinant DNA technology that allows the production of antigenic polypeptides of the pathogen. With the help of what? With the help of bacteria or with the help of the yeast. We know that an yeast is able to multiply very fast, similarly the case of the bacteria. So this allows large scale production, hence greater viability for immunization. For example, for a long period, this hepatitis B infection was giving a very big threat to man. And man is able to invent a vaccine and with the help of hepatitis B vaccine that is being produced from the yeast, we are able to easily neutralize the disease. Okay, so these are the yeast cells with the help of which we are able to have a large scale production of the vaccine. Now, here is a food for thought for all of you. What is that? Number one, by worldwide vaccination, which virus is totally eradicated? Think. Number two, do we have a vaccine today against HIV? Okay, think deeply. Third one today, what is the threat? Coronavirus, no, COVID-19. Have we developed a vaccine against this COVID virus? If not, why? If not, we have such an advancement in biotechnology throughout the world. And uh, how is that? Even till today, after more than four months, we are still unable to develop a vaccine against the corona or COVID-19 virus. Think.